everybody. So I had a question recently asked to me on YouTube, um, and it's a good question, and we get the question fairly um, recent. I mean, we've gotten it recently, but we also get it very commonly. It's a common question that we get. Um, the question was, what temperature do you use your hot air station at, and what temperature do you use your um, soldering iron at? Now, maybe you're starting up uh, this as a hobby yourself, or maybe you're into the business and you recently purchased a uh, new hot air station, uh, soldering iron, uh, whatever. And so you're curious, you know, how, uh, what do you, what temperatures do I use for the repairs I do? And I understand I, I've been in the same boat before. Uh, I've asked other people the question uh, when I would see their YouTube videos, uh, ask them, you know, what heat uh, temperature do you use? How uh, much airflow do you put through your hot air station? And they've answered the same way. So I'm gonna answer it the same way they answered me. Uh, really, there's nothing that I can tell you um, as far as the temperatures I use or the air pressure that I use um, for both the hot air station and the temperatures for the hot air or the hot um, soldering iron. Uh, I can't really, I don't really give that information out. And it's not because I'm trying to conceal the information or keep it private. Uh, it's because each hot air station is different. Uh, for instance, say I was going to buy this exact same hot air station that I have. I have a quick 861DW. It's a quick brand. Um, pretty decent price. Um, works very well. I've had it for going on uh, going over a year now, maybe two years. Uh, it works really good. Um, but if but say that I wanted to buy another one, and I wanted to use the exact same temperature settings I have on this uh, that one as I do this one, um, the the difference between the two would be quite a bit uh, and because it may be that you know this station is a little bit older so I have to jack up the heat a little bit more because maybe the heat elements aren't as strong as they were when I first purchased them also the compressor that blows the air out it may be stronger in the new uh, unit that we buy uh, so really uh, I, you have to figure out which, te which temperatures are best for yourself uh, and the way you do that is by experimenting uh, find yourself a scrap board um, and start with low temperatures and work your way up until you figure out how much heat you need and how much airflow you need to remove the component on that board um, and the thing is you don't want to start super hot because then you could easily damage the board the layers on the board could separate or you could burn up uh, part of the, the pads or uh, you know anything like that or um, say that you're removing something that um, has plastic next to it, like a, maybe the, the um, MagSafe connector here. Uh, it's plastic. This will melt. So you have to know which temperatures to use uh, around it because you don't want to melt that piece or else you're going to have to replace that too. So it just requires a little time, a little bit of experimenting, uh, trial and error type of thing to figure out what temperatures are best for you. And also, this is going to change per device. Uh, the newer um, units I've noticed, like the touch bar boards, uh, they seem to, uh, the thermal, um, I don't know what you call it, but the way it handles the heat, uh, sometimes you have to jack up the heat a lot more because uh, the board disperses the heat uh, better in those boards. Uh, the older units, maybe you don't have to use as much heat. Uh, working on iPhones, uh, you need to lower that heat down quite a bit because the boards are smaller, therefore they're going to get hot a lot faster, and uh, you can damage the the parts on those uh, on iPhone boards pretty easily because most of the chips, the BGA chips, are going to be underfilled. So applying too much heat to those, like your uh, processor um, uh, and other chips like that, uh, it's going to ruin it. The the hot the solder balls in it when they heat up they expand, and when you have underfill covering the entire bottom of the chip when those solder balls expand they just ooze out and they'll bridge with other pads and other solder balls underneath the chip and it'll be ruined you have to replace that um, so basic, basically the answer is trial and error you have to figure it out for yourself and it's not complicated uh, I was thinking when um, when someone told me that same answer uh, I was thinking wow you're not very much help but really it is. Um, you have to figure it out for yourself and when you learn your own solder station and your own solder, um, your own hot air station yourself, uh, you know how to work with it much better. You can make the adjustments needed much better. You understand which adjustments need to be made. 
uh, per board and eventually you'll just get the hang of it and it's not a problem at all and so um, anyways I hope that helps you answer it out uh, I hope that uh, everything works good for you and it's a fun process to learn because uh, you really want to learn your tools the best that you can because if you're using them every day you need to know them uh, how they work uh, and then you can accomplish your job a lot better anyways I hope this helped you out um, if you have any more questions or comments please uh, let us know and if you enjoy the videos make sure and uh, hit the subscribe button down below as well as the little bell icon so you can be notified when we do post more videos um, anyways uh, again I hope you enjoyed it and we'll talk to you next time have a nice day